Hi guys, it's Adam at the Astro Imaging Channel. Uh, today we are going to go over some of my actions that I posted on the Cloudy Nights forum. I also posted it in the uh, description of this event, and um, uh, I'll probably post it in the comments in a second just so you guys have full access to it. There are some bugs in these uh, actions. Um, we'll probably come across a few of them. But in general, I'll explain to you how to overcome them and uh, how they're just going to be handy. Uh, they are not uh, pre-processing actions or anything along that lines. Uh, they're more uh, final little touches that you're going to do to your image to just kind of spruce it up or give it a little bit more shine. I think if you use them too early in the process, you're going to do damage to your image. So uh, that's my suggestion uh, when it comes to them. Uh, they're, they're not necessarily smart uh, in any way. Uh, so uh, they just kind of do exactly what you'll, you'll see. Uh, they will make you smarter if you choose to learn what they're doing, though. Uh, you'll have new techniques to, to take out of them. And they are all based off of previous techniques that even we've seen here uh, from Scott, uh, Josh, uh, uh, and a lot of people that have been on. Um, but I'm going to jump right into them, and I'm going to jump right into Photoshop. And if you can't see my screen, just scream out, but uh, for now, I'm going to assume you can. Uh, and here you go. Over on the right side, you probably see Adam's Astro Actions. Um, that is what they're called. And uh, if you find the link, you can download them and install the actions. Uh, if you don't know how to install actions, you can look it up. Uh, I don't know if you have to have them in your ac action directory, uh, but you can load them from there. Um, Google it, though. You'll, you'll find out quickly enough. Um, so the first action is the layered high pass filter and on these particular actions layered high pass and layered high pass with star mask um, the, the opacity sliders are the way that you adjust the actions now this is uh, my image of the wall uh, region in NGC 7, uh, 7000 uh, the North American Nebula. This is actually the Gulf of Mexico over here, and uh, this is kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, Mexico and uh, Panama, I guess. I, um, I think. I don't know. Central America, maybe. Uh, this region does extend down further, and I get te little teases of it on the bottom, which make me really want to do more of this, but I'd be afraid of a mosaic on an image like this, uh, just because of my own skills. Um, so, this image, uh, I actually have performed these actions on, and it might not be the best image to, uh, if I were if I were doing it, using these actions on, it might push it too far. So I probably wouldn't do it at this point on this image, but uh, I think because of the brightness of the image and the fact that we're streaming, I think it's going to make what the actions do more clear, and that's the important thing is that you guys understand exactly what they're doing. So I'm going to start right off the Layered High Pass filter, Basically, and I'm going to click play, and hopefully my voice doesn't cut out when I'm doing this, but I'm going to click play. Basically, it duplicates the layer, um, I believe, six times, and is it done? <laughs> like I said, this tool has some bugs, and sometimes it works perfectly, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, oh, no, okay, this this worked fine. Um... So what this does is it creates a number of layers. Hold on, let me make sure that worked. Yeah, that worked. Uh, it creates a number of layers and performs a high-pass filter on each at different scales. And the number next to it is, this, is the pixel scale that is performed the high-pass filter on. So this is on one pixel, what, five pixels, 10 pixels, 25 pixels, 50 pixels, 100 pixels. Uh, I find Nebula like this that fills the whole screen uh, is going to use the higher numbers. Uh, on galaxies, the higher numbers might be dangerous, and you might be sticking more to the lower numbers. But uh, I haven't processed many galaxy images with it at this focal length yet, so that's just from what I've learned previously with other little tools like this that I've done. Um, so I'm going to start at the high pass 100 layer. Uh, because uh, it's going to be the most obvious. And if you, um, since it's 100, it's operating, the, it's operating sharpening on 100 pixels. 
So it's going to use larger, it's going to sharpen larger scale regions. And I'm just going to crank the opacity up to 100. And you can see it made it really ugly, but at the same time, uh, it sharpened it heavily. And with, and I'm going to break it down, I'm going to bring it down. I'm at 9% now. Now, this is one thing I should point out immediately. With this tool, uh, you're going to go gentle. Uh, you can do it in a few iterations. Uh, you're not, you're most likely not going to crank it. Now, if you crank it and it looks good, uh, maybe you'll use it. Uh, pay close attention, though, to regions um, of detail because it can make them fall apart quickly. This is the, I'm going to deactivate it so you can see. And you can see how sharp it made it look, but also um, it, it did become kind of, at, at this scale, a noisy mess. So you are going to use a delicate balance of this and noise reduction to get a little bit more sharpening out of it. But one thing that really helps with this, because if you've noticed at this scale, and more so at smaller scales. I'm going to deactivate this scale and go to the high pass at 25 and boost that. You can see immediately what happened to the stars. And I'm going to deactivate it. I'm going to boot and I'm going to reactivate it. I'm going to deactivate it and reactivate it. And you can see it imme it blows out the stars. And uh, I I was pretty proud of this wall image and I posted it on Cloudy Nights, and that's what everyone's eyes went to. And, you know, it's the one thing you ignore when you're processing an image is the one thing that everyone else's eyes go to. And as soon as I saw it, it started driving me nuts. So I've reacquired RGB stars, and I'm waiting to put them in. But uh, at the same time, I'm trying, what I'm taking out of it is I'm trying to be as careful as I can with my stars. So although this high-pass filter works really well, um, it's limitations are the stars. So what I've actually gone, uh, which I, what I've actually done is I've created another one that, uh, another action that's called layered high pass with star mask. And after it I put stretch or replace star mask to suit. And you'll see why. Um, first, I click play and uh, even at this point I could ask if there are any questions right now. <clears throat> I have one. Go ahead. Uh, so I don't have that particular action. Um, maybe that's new, or maybe you didn't upload it, or something oh, like that. So, so the, my question is, if I just generated a star mask, could I add a layer mask that is those stars to each one of these high-pass layers? Yes. You can do that, and in fact, the... I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know why that didn't, uh, why those actions didn't upload. Let me actually do this right now. Oh, oh no! Um, it's been like a week since I grabbed those, so maybe oh, maybe yeah, I'm late, yeah. late to the I, party. <laughs> I I uploaded it uh, more recently than that, and uh, actually oh. I debugged a few of them, and I took and I added a few of them. So there are a few bugs in some of those early ones, and they might not, they won't blow up your computer, but. Uh, I think these work. They work better on I think great a lot of grayscale images, or they work between grayscale and RGB images. There are a few things that I kind of fixed, I think, and there's still going to be bugs, but we'll see. But um, yes, layer mask, uh, yes, and in fact, the second action right here is does exactly that. And uh, I learned this I think from Scott Rosen. Uh, that you can actually put a layer mask on a group. And that was my aha moment, because now I've applied the same uh, layer mask to all of those high-pass filters. Uh, it, and that's also all I'll say about that for now, because what I want to show you is the layer mask itself. And because of the creation process that I'm using, it doesn't always give me the best star mask. Uh, in fact, you can see here, uh, it's picked up a good amount of the nebula, and uh, I think 
I'm working on trying to get a way for you to make a good star mask out of it, but uh, it really is best to go in and create your own, and it's simple enough. You just go back to your background layer, select all, which is Control A, hit Control C, which is copy, jump back up to that by alt clicking it, and um, I'm going to paste that right on, right in there, right on top of it. And I'm going to invert it by hitting Control I. So I have what looks like the same mask. And this is probably the way I should have done it in the action. And I might go right back in shortly after this and put the make it do this way in the action. But this mask will take a stretch a lot better. And at the same time will let me uh, get rid of these kind of highlights that I need to keep I, I need to not mask off because those are the areas where I want to do my um, sharpening so oops. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and brighten that just a little bit and then bring protect the stars a little bit more and uh, the, the better the quality of your star mask, the uh, more pretty, I'll say, your stars will be. Uh, this sharpening method does tend to put white circles inside of your stars, which um, I guess, I don't know, uh, I could probably blur it a little bit more, but uh, based on the star mask, uh, and that's something I'm still working on. I should probably show you a different method of star mass generation at the same time, but uh, for now, I'm just going to use this. And... Would it be better to only have the stars, or is it okay that you have some of the nebulosity? Well, what I'm going to do right now oh. is I'm going to go in and just paint out a little bit of the nebulosity right there. I don't I don't really care so much about having a little bit of it in there because um, the star mask will still sharpen those areas uh, or excuse me the, the the high pass filter will still sharpen those areas but um, but yes if you can go in and make a perfect star mask do it because uh, it's it is going to give you better results. Um, I'm just kind of rushing through that now because uh, I want to demonstrate the way the action works. Uh, and uh, to be honest, I I have two or three methods that I use for star mass generation. One Mike Miller suggested last week, and that's kind of been my preferred method over the last week. But uh, I get mixed results. Even using one method, I'll get mixed results. So it's kind of a... Mm -hmm. Have you tried a threshold on that star mask? A threshold, threshold command. A threshold. Uh, the threshold I have. command. Uh, call, you, using call, call, call it back up. It call it back up so we're it's on the screen. Now, uh, image adjustments. Uh, yeah, Sean, I can't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, image yeah, adjustment it's, threshold. Threshold. Okay. Uh huh. That will work. Uh, maybe it'll work. You know what? Yeah. It didn't work before I did this stretch. And I'm gonna quickly. I'm gonna go right back and quickly try it. Uh, man, where, 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 where? Okay. Oh no! It's not gonna let me in before the stretch. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go right in and demonstrate the mask because uh, I do want to uh, at least show you what it does a little bit. Uh, same thing as before, uh, and you can see this time it's sharpening, but the stars do have a bit more protection. And let me deactivate that. Let me crank that up again. Uh, that's actually the 10. I think the last time I was showing you the 25, but stars get a little bit bigger. But let me show you without the star mask. 
So it actually is protecting them significantly. Not as much as if I was, wasn't, uh, weren't doing the action, but uh, it is protecting them significantly. If I were to go up to the star mask, even try to darken the stars a little bit more, is I'm noticing the action is, uh, I, I, the action's working hard enough. I, it's doing its job. Um, see what happens with the stars this time when I deactivate it. So they still are blowing up a little bit, but not as bad as without the star mass. So now I'm going to zoom out so you can see what's going on. It has sharpened a lot of the details in this. And I don't know if you can see around the... Uh, I don't know. To me, it kind of looks like the Statue of Liberty, or uh, maybe maybe the front of a pirate ship with like a lady and a, and uh, stuff. I don't know if you guys see that. Maybe that's just me. I've been staring at this image for hours on end, so I've seen a lot of stuff in it. Um, so it helps sharpen. Uh, you can notice the way it sharpens that area, and of course, it's overdone because I'm at opacity 100. But you're going to use these opacity filter or layer. Or, excuse me these opacity sliders to uh, to allow just a certain amount of that to go through. So you can see at 27 it starts looking like a reasonable image and also gets a nice bit of sharpening. And this is only at the 10 pixel scale. I have other scales to operate on. So I can go up to the 25 pixel scale and start boosting that. This is going to operate on larger scales, so you're probably going to notice it more when I back out. Um, but as I click it, you can see. And where I notice the big improvement here is on the right bottom side, where it looks like the dark dust is kind of flowing over. And uh, if you notice down there, really makes it pop. Now I've done this a hundred I've done this a few times over on this Oh no, did we lose Adam? Come back Adam. Wonder if he knows he's gone. <laughs> uh, I would assume so. Yeah. He asked where Mitching Channel left the group chat. So has anyone else uh, used these actions? Apparently, I'm uh, using the old version of these actions. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to use them. I've been trying to use Star Tools this week, and um, because of that, because of that couple of weeks ago when we had that demonstration of it, I was pretty impressed with what I saw. Oh, it's a great it's, tool. Yeah, it's not as automatic as I thought it was going to be. There's, um, I haven't, I haven't cracked the nut yet. This morning I had a little bit of luck with it and stuff like that, processing an old um, jelly bean or jelly fish nebula. Um, but I'm, I'm just seeing an awful lot of noise, both in my, in everything I'm doing, I'm seeing an awful lot of noise. I don't know if it's the summer heat, the, um, although that shouldn't matter with, you know, a CCD, or the half hour exposures or what, but it just seems like I've had a lot of noise in my pictures lately. So. I've had a lot of noise in mine it's because I've been ending up making like a, only getting a two-hour window with ten-minute exposure, so I have like twelve, twelve images to stack. So it's inherent. Yeah, I I may just need more images to stack. I've been I've been trying to take my best uh, fifteen or so, and uh, I just may have to go with more, although. Even my um, my um, my subs seem to have more noise than I'm used to, I, and I don't know if so, have I become more critical in looking at them or 
did my wife adjust the monitor or something? I don't know. Looks like Adam's back. Adam? Well, Adam, no, Adam isn't back. What's that? Who is that? Tim is out there also? Hi, Tim. Yep, bottom's back. No, that's Tim, I guess. Did you guys see my screen? Yeah. So, uh, I just ran his actions for the layered high pass uh -huh. with the stellar mask. Apparently I do have it. I was mistaken. Who's this, uh, Sean? Yeah. yeah. So my star mask looks a lot better than his did. Maybe it's the image itself. It doesn't have a lot of uh, nebulosity. You don't have the nebulosity he did. The bright yeah. nebulosity. Obviously that must be the key, right? So um so they all start at zero. Mm -hmm. Huh. I'm not maybe I maybe there's not something I'm not doing. Yours isn't as stretched as his, so you don't have the the high nebulosity, the uh, high value nebulosity to show. Or maybe you don't have anything really at the hundred pixel level. Maybe, maybe so. Try one of the other ones. Oh yeah, okay. I see the stars really go crazy here on this fifty. It is. Yeah, the, the fifty. Oh, God. oh well, look who's back. Hey. Is the dog okay. Just a couple minutes. Just a couple? Because I was talking yeah. for a while. Fortunately, oh, I stopped. Yeah. For, fortunately, <laughs> yeah. I stopped so you didn't realize you were gone, right? No. Okay, well then I'll go back to mute. What was the last thing you guys got? I heard. Uh, the Denver was ahead by no, I don't know what it was. <laughs> oh. Oop, where did that? Let's see here. Wrong, wrong one. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right. So I was, uh, I'm not sure exactly where I got cut off, but uh, I was going over the layer, layered high pass with Star Mask, and um, it pretty much does the same thing as the previous action, uh, but it creates a Star Mask, and my suggestion coming out of this tool is uh, make your own Star Mask, play around with masks, learn how to use masks, uh, and get them in here. The important thing to remember with star masks is uh, invert them uh, because your stars have to be black. Black conceals, white reveals. So I'm going to delete this because I'm not going to use that. And I'm going to show you the next action, which is star mask layer. This is one I really haven't debugged much, so we will see. And it goes in and creates just a layer with a star mask. And I'm going to go in and it creates that same type of star mask that I created before, and I'm not a hundred percent happy with um, the. Uh, I'm still not hundred percent happy with the way this is creating star masks, and I may go in and try and experiment and figure something out. I think actually with a threshold, I might be able to improve it, but not um, repeatably on different data. Um, so basically, that's it. You've, it's created a star mask layer for you. So you have a layer that you can, on, on something like this, uh, whatever you want to do, um, if you want to do your sharpening on darker areas or uh, desaturate certain areas of, of darkness, uh, this might be your chance. Uh, but that's just a basic one, so I'm going to drop it out there. Luminosity mask layer. 
puts a, ma a layer in with the luminosity mask. It's that simple. There's a luminosity mask. It's the same exact thing. Um, if you were intimidated to make masks in the past, this is easiest way to do it. Uh, but uh, don't be intimidated because you really should be using them. Um, this is the color and luminosity layer stack with star mask. And I always find myself using the same thing. Um, and this created the star mask that same way, the same way that I might go and change. But, uh, I always end up, and let me make sure it did this right now. Yeah, I, for some reason it's doing this wrong. So if you guys at home are watching this, for some reason the color layer is labeled as luminosity and luminance is normal. So switch them back. And what you've now done is you've pretty much separated the components, the luminous component and the color component component and you can oper uh, you can act on each of them individually so for example I can uh, with a, and I should add uh, with a star mask so you can boost nebula without boosting the stars and you can also control their color at the same time or you can boost their color at the same uh, excuse me boost the nebula's color at the same same time uh, selective color saturation this would work for um, I use just uh, if you use the color mode and you use curves and you pick one channel well you are anything you boost you are pretty much saturating. So that's pretty, it's as close to color saturation. Well, it is color saturation. Uh, and of course, we selectively select areas by control clicking a spot, control clicking a spot, contr uh, control clicking a spot, and you see it's a center area. So if I tap up, doing is now, it's not going to only saturate the blue nebula region in the center, what it's actually going to do is saturate uh, the uh, just the red channel of this luminance uh, or this luminance level. So uh, it'll saturate, if this blue down here happens to be the same luminance level, it'll saturate it, but it'll also saturate anything at the same luminance level. And for that, uh, that's the control that I have over this here. But I, I'm, I feel like I can control saturation that way a little bit better. I know when something needs a little bit more blue or a little bit less green, and I can usually work my way through that. Uh, but but using this, you can really uh, saturate whichever way you want, and that's why I always find myself in this color luminance stack. So that's why I created that action. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but uh, you can put the Let's see if it's going to work. Uh, layered high pass with star mask. You do have to perform all of these actions on a background layer. So keep that in mind. Uh, it might not work. Uh, Adam, it's what do you mean by a background layer, Adam? Um, there, when you open Photoshop, when you open an image in, the fo in Photoshop, it keeps it as the background layer. Right Correct. here, which is a locked layer. Um, ah. When you, if you were to create a new image and paste something into it, then it comes up as layer one on top of a white background. So that's the difference. So these all have to be run on the background layer. Yes, for now, until I figure out why it is, because I, I don't. That was a problem I was running into because I always create a new layer and then do some sort of action or something. So I think the that newer actions might work a little bit better on other layers, but the what ha I, I think you get into problems when you're in like a group like this. Like if I were to try and create it on this group luminance, I don't think I think it would mess it up somehow. I don't quite know what what it would do to it, but. Um, so, yeah, so this, this one kind of broke, 
and I'm not quite sure why, but what it did is it couldn't make the layer mask. And I'm going to go right in and take this mask out of here because it was going to create it using the same method that just worked. Maybe it has to do with the fact that I am um, uh, I am using another group, but I'm not quite sure. And uh, just because it's the way I want it. Oops, I'm going to drag that group. Adam, after you've done one of your actions, are all the subsequent layers up above that something other than normal in the blend mode? Um, what do you mean, the pass-through? or? Well, it seems to me that it, you said everything's got to be performed on a background layer. Yes. So if you've done it on a background layer and then you, you, you've done one set of actions to get you to a certain place, um, then you got to go back to the background layer and do another set of actions. How does the one get one set get to the other set if there's a normal in there someplace? Because normal just basically says, you know, um, everything well, right, that's here is is here from now on up. Right now there are no normals. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. And yeah, that, the background layer is what the background layer would be the normal layer. The color only affects the color. The luminance only affects the luminance. Now, all, the, your, all your high passes are overlays or soft uh, folk, or soft uh, whatever, um, soft light. These are overlays. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all passing right through. Um, there is an action that uses a normal mode, but that's for noise reduction, and. Uh, I, I, this has worked for me. Now, the one thing that you should notice is you're not touching the the background layer um, as you do this stuff. So you're you're really only changing stuff right up until you flatten the image. Um, but the reason I did this is because I always end up with this, and I was actually going to say exactly what Alex kind of touched on is that it is going to pass right through. So right now, I have set my image separated into a color layer, a luminance layer, and then a bunch of different scales that I could do my sharpening on. And at the same time, um, and this I, I don't think is going to work, uh, but I can try it. This is the one that's probably going to put it over the top. Yeah. Go click on background and try it. Click on your background layer and try it. Oh, did I not click on the background that time? I don't know. I didn't notice. I might not have. No. It's it's when it, because I use that uh, highlights command to uh, create the star mask because it's doing it only when it tries to make the. Oops. When it tries. Where did I put that? Right there. Okay. Let's. Get rid of that. Um, now, oh no, now the, this is, uh, the, these are all in normal mode. So I do not think, even if uh, I were to crank that, no, you're not seeing it because they are all cranked. That's the other thing. The opacity sliders don't always work, so you always have to go back and check it. Uh, I'm going to send this to the trash because. Um, it's not going to work the, the way I was hoping it to, so I'll just demonstrate it on its own. Uh, but I do all, I do frequently end up with this because let's say I see an area I want to sharpen. Um, you can go right in. Oh, one more thing I should show you is uh, I'm going to go in to this layer mask and I want to delete it all and leave a black mask remaining and I want to go to let's say the 50 and crank it I want to deactivate that mask for a second and when I go up to 50 and I'm going to crank it up and uh, let's find a nice you can see what happens it, it right now it's a nice image and now like you really see all that flowing dust kind of flowing over.
but at the, it, it just makes it ugly. It just makes it way, way, way too kind of crazy. But sometimes you want to push it, and you feel like you can selectively fix it in some regions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-enable that mask, disable it, see the spots that I like the look of. And it seems to me that the darker spots will take this better, and uh, I have to be careful around the transition areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the mask, I'm going to take this big wide brush tool and opacity layer of um, sorry, I just jumped uh, just jumped around a little bit. Uh, an opacity, let's say, a 36 might be fine. And I'm going to just use this and, oops, I'm in the wrong layer. Let's get rid of that change there. I want to be in, uh, this is important, I want to be on the layer mask and I want to make sure that the black box is going around the layer mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that opacity there. And uh, now this does not give you star protection. So keep that in mind. If you can avoid the stars, avoid the stars. Uh, I'm not going to avoid the stars right now just so I can show you uh, how this works. But what I'm doing is I'm actually painting in some sharpening. And you can see the mask right here. This is the mask. And I've pretty much just sharpened the regions that I want. You can click over them. And I'm pretty much just able to paint a sharpening filter on. Right there a little bit, right there a little bit more. And um, I'll show you what it looks like with the filter deactivated. Oh, that's not, that's not going to demonstrate it. Let me see. I'll show you what it looks like with no sharpening done. If I deactivate the filter, you see the uh, entire sharpening effect. So that's with the sharpening. That's without the sharpening. With the sharpening, without the sharpening. gone again. Are you guys seeing when um, Sean goes painting on something, it seems like the underlying image disappears? Or when uh, Adam goes painting on something? I noticed that as well. Okay. It's just the way the computer's vi uh, videos are uh, putting stuff. Video card. I think that's why he asked uh, about it when we first started, uh, if we saw it zoom in or if the screen went blank. Hmm. His screen or my ours? His his screen. Hmm. Okay. He was sharpening stuff, selectively sharpening. Let's try to remember that this time so he thinks we were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. He'll be back, and he'll want to know. He'll another. He'll want to report. That's right. Selective That's sharpening. Slick. That's pretty slick. I like that luminance yeah. mask that uh, generates all that. What's happening? I don't know what's going on. What's happening? <laughs> I'm guessing I'm the only one that's getting booted, but. Yeah, that language thing. <laughs> yeah. How long was I off for? A uh, minute and 42 seconds, selective sharpening. Good, I'll okay. Back to you this time because we knew you'd ask. Yeah. Uh, great. Thank that you. is 24-7. Thank you. Um, all right, I have to switch back over to... <laughs> can't remember who's ahead, but it's 
the, uh, the orange guys are beating the white guys. Ain't no fair. My team is orange and white. <laughs> I won today. Oh, he's gone he again. lost him again. Jeez. Oh. What's going on? <laughs> you know, that's why one of the reasons I always pay my cable bill. <laughs> you know, I got uh, booted from Google Plus session when uh, I was trying to use Photoshop on us on my laptop monitor and have the uh, the hangout play on the main monitor. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's Alan's problem though. Every time I, every time I click Photoshop uh, full screen, it seems to boot me. I think maybe not. I'm gonna try it one more time. Oh no! Okay, hold on. Let's go. It just rearranged all of my Photoshop actions in a really funky way. You don't even have any storms out there, do you? <laughs> Gone again. Yeah. And this was going to be his time to shine, too. I'm going to try something different this time. Yeah, we lost you for something. Again. Well, that wasn't the good thing to try, I guess, huh? got rid of Denny, so now we got a better coach. Hmm. What's happening in Ohio next week? Does anybody know? I've got to be in Ohio next week. Anything interesting happening there? Anybody from Ohio in this group? Not here. But <clears throat> I just got a lot than I was previously. So this is gonna work. Thank. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. I can't see any image if you've got an image on your... No, um, there's, there's no image up yet. I had to actually yeah. close out Photoshop. It, All it's, my... Both Sean and I noticed uh, that when you were um, brushing or anything on Photoshop, the image itself disappeared quite often. Okay, yeah. I noticed that with Hytham, too. I don't... I don't quite know what was going on with this. It might, hopefully it was temporary because it seemed to have something to do with Photoshop and Google Hangouts at the same time. Um, so... And I, uh, I should also say I still have Carboni's actions, Carboni's tools, and I use them frequently. My tools are not substitutes for any of those. Uh, they actually work. I use a few specific ones of them, and they work really well. Um, a uh, that color and luminosity stack that I use it puts a luminosity mask on it. Same exact thing. Um, this is a luminosity mask Gaussian blur, and the reason I 
did this was sometimes you do that last final little stretch and you, despite however hard you try, uh, you try and target the, um, just that like medium region. Uh, it ends up pulling a little bit of noise out of this background and what it pretty, what this pretty much does is it targets towards the background Gaussian blur uh, this particular mask, as you can see, clips your highlights and clips them pretty heavily. It may not work on every image that way. Uh, if it hasn't worked on your image that way, go in and perform it that way. Uh, but when you go out, uh, so you can see this particular action is in normal mode, so this is blocking the background from passing through to get this action to be permanent, you would. Uh, the same way as before, flatten the image. But uh, if I go in, oops, uh, if I go in and disable this, you're going to see very little happen in the highlight areas. But if I go over here and disable it, hopefully you can see that. But the uh, grittiness disappears. And since it's a luminance mask, most of it happens. I'm going to go in further because you'll see the grittiness. Because it's a luminance mask, uh, it only performs it on the dark areas. It's a Gaussian blur with a two pixel deviation. Um, that is kind of a large Gaussian blur. Uh, so one thing I've done and I've, is I've actually created this tool that I just tried to use before. Uh, Multi-scale multi Gaussian blur. Uh, I put a luminosity mask on this. I don't know why because what I really, what I really should have done is I should have uh, put a nice luminosity mask on this with a big heavy clip. But this is up to you because let's say you notice as you're stretching your image you um, there is some noise being generated in the brighter regions. This mask is your threshold to show what is what this reduction, what this noise reduction is being performed on. Now again, this is just a Gaussian blur, but it, you, you set the standard deviation and, or I've set the standard deviation. Uh, I call this the small scale noise reduction. To be honest, I can't remember whether I set this at uh, 0.5 pixels or 1 pixel, or somewhere in between. I might have actually done it at 0.75 pixels, uh, but uh, in general, it's really just a blurring filter on the darker regions. If I crank this one, uh, you will barely notice a change. I have to go in really close, and the spots, again, since that luminosity mask is clipping the brights heavily, I'm going to go down to a dark area and show you this. This is with it being used at 100%. So this is without it. This is with it. This is without it. And this is with it. Now, I have another scale that I could use it at. And just for the time being, I'm going to disable that. And use this scale at 100%. Now, this is going to appear to blur it. Um, with this per with this particular action, if you are using the medium scale noise reduction, you can completely disable this. I'm sorry, I thought I lost you. Uh, you can completely disable the small scale noise reduction because you're using the same luminosity mask, so they're really isn't a reason to blur one pixel and then on top of that blur two pixels uh, because uh, there really isn't a point. Uh, if you do, I don't know, it's uh, 
you can try it. Uh, or actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you do, uh, you have to do it in two different steps because we are using normal mode. So when I turn this layer on, it's blocking this layer from being shown. So no matter what I do with that, uh, you can't see it. So what you want to do with this tool is you want to pick the size or the scale of the noise reduction. And I would always zoom in to perform this action because if you're, again, this is at the very end of your image, and look in the dark area that you're trying to fix and see if that small scale does it. If the small scale does it, then you can move up to the medium scale. Uh, if the medium scale doesn't do it, you can move up to the large scale. Large scale is a pretty heavy blur, so you're not you're not going to use it at 100%, most likely. But again, this is a normal mode, so this is kind of a dumb mode, and you're really just blending these. So there is going to be some noise existing in this. It's not like smarter noise algorithms where it replaces the noise. Uh, this is just blending a blurred image in with the noise. Uh, so it doesn't work so well at larger scales. Um, in fact, I really like most of these actions. It's a kind of last step touching up thing. Um, what I intended to do was only do this on the small scale. And uh, let's say I like it there. I'm happy with it. You would just flatten the image. You would I thought that when you push discard, it discarded the layer, not the speaker. <laughs> yeah. I've got to be a lot more careful with that particular button. <laughs> Maybe it's me. I'm trying to follow along with Photoshop. Maybe I'm kicking Adam out. <laughs> It has something to do with, uh, I think, when I... I don't know. Did I click something when I got kicked out? Yeah, I see, you clicked the button that said discard Adam. Yeah. <laughs> I see Photoshop uh, not struggling, but... Uh, I don't know. It seems like Photoshop is, I don't know, bogging down something. Um, and I don't quite know why. Uh Oh, let's see. Am I at the right? Oh, I hope this doesn't happen again now as soon as I click Photoshop. Probably will, won't it? Nope. Okay, I'm still in. Okay. And how long was I out for again? Just, uh... No, did you hear terribly this time. Momentarily, okay. So I'm working my way down. Uh, dark region desaturate. Uh, this came in really handy with a few different images. And basically what this tool does is I click it and creates a mask that heavily clips the image, only affects the really, really dark regions, and desaturates them. Now, why would you want to do that? Very, very frequently when I'm processing an image, um, I, can, I, I get like uh, an odd modeling in the low signal areas. My, my noise reduction tends to turn stuff to orange peeling, and as I work on that kind of odd modeling, it turns into just like what looks like green and red bubbles. And you can kind of, it, it would be down in this lower left region, but I have performed this action on this image previously. Uh, sometimes it actually shows up as green, and a lot of people use like Hasta La Vista Green to get rid of it. Um, for that, maybe it's more so across the entire image, but uh, when I click this, it desaturates those regions. So if I deactivate it, uh, you will see, uh, now since I've already used this tool, this is going to be going a little bit farther with it, but you can see it's turning this little red region right here, or this little dusty dark region right here, into a grayer region. And uh, 
I don't know if if I was looking to do that, I might be happy with it. I actually intentionally made this a little bit more red, just so I would uh, just to kind of exaggerate it. So um, that is uh, that is dark region desaturate. I kind of find that handy, that tool. Now, blown out star fixes. These are because I was just working on a particular image, and I'm going to go right in and try and show you what they do, and I'm going to hope they work as I'm expecting, and my guess is I'll get booted out as soon as I do it. Let me actually find the brightest star. Let me find the brightest star. Right there. Now again, I have already performed this action on this image, so it, it may not show up. But when I use this blown out star fix, uh, as soon as I click play, it tells me to use the magic wand tool uh, to select just the blown out areas of the brighter stars. The action will be applied to all selected areas. Um, so I'm going to go into the magic wand. You can use... I started out using a tolerance of 60, so that's what I'm going to use on this and see what happens. And you can see I'm just selecting the very, very central blown out region of that star. Uh, I actually have contiguous selected. I don't want that selected. I'm going to go back in and reselect that star with that deselected. And you can see it has selected uh, the highlights of most of my stars. Uh, some of the nebula region, which I can remove and hope that it didn't take, didn't seem to take much of the stars with it. And so that is, uh, that's the user interaction and that action. I am going to click play, and what that actually does is it quickly expands the selection, feathers it, um, Okay, let me see. Uh, feathers it. Uh, selects only those stars, and inside of a or makes a layer mask that selects only those stars, and does a dust and scratches filter on this. Actually, I'm I'm just noticing that because I thought I had them backwards. Uh, I actually do have them backwards. Uh, and the dust and scratches filter really just tames that center of the star. Uh, what it's actually doing, if, if you've ever done the dust and scratches filter, is it like really messes with it. But you're only doing it at the center of the stars that were blown out. And uh, Mike Miller had suggested this a couple of weeks ago, just using, I think he said dust and scratches or maybe even the smudge tool. But uh, look what it did. It took the center of that star. It's still bright in the center but it's not blown out. Will this work on every image? I don't know. Um, the more it gets tested, the better. Uh, I had actually intended to show you this tool second because this is the more... I found this to work a lot better than the minimum filter, which runs uh, a similar action, user interaction, Let's remove that, and it's, it's a, it is okay if it's only selecting the very, very center of the stars because it does perform that ex, uh, expand as soon as you click play, and it does the same exact thing with a minimum filter, and um, that actually, uh, actually, uh, I'm trying to think it does something. I'm trying to think, I thought it did something besides that, but uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, but you can see when I run that filter, it tames the stars in a similar way. And uh, it doesn't produce any artifacts uh, that, I, that I've seen yet. Um, 
Now, this is just really dimming the stars a little bit, but there are a lot of times you're going to want to do that. In fact, the more the more Im the more imaging I do, especially wide field, the more I more time I spend doing that. Um, that's pretty much all of my actions, and uh, they're available. Uh, they're available. There's a cloudy nights link. They're available at this um, at the description for this event. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the Dropbox link right in the chat box here. And uh, there they are. And uh, now what I think I'm going to do is uh, just open up the discussion. Uh, first ask if there were any questions based on those actions. If not, then uh, I'm just going to open up the discussion because the to uh, topic today, uh, besides the actions, was uh, what makes a good image great. And uh, I'm going to throw it right out there. I'm going to stop talking and ask you guys, what do you guys really look for? Uh, what what images drop your jaw? Uh, what is it in them that your eyes go to? What makes you say, this guy's a pro and this guy is pretty good? Noise. I think there's a fine line between, uh, you know, anybody can use noise reduction, right? And get a very smooth image uh, of this massive loss of detail. So uh, when, when I see very fine detail and very, very low or no noise, that's what I say, uh, really stands above, you know. Yeah, I I agree with that. And you look down at the uh, specs of the image, and it's forty hours. And there's the, there's a best way to get rid of noise, and that's integration time. Oh, it take me a year to get forty hours, man. Yeah, I know, I know. And it's like forty hours at f two point six or something. Uh, right. Not just uh, not just uh, some normal refractor. So what else? I, as I'm getting better and better, I I look at my stars and I'm paying more attention to them. But I don't know if that's because I look at some of the greats out there, and a lot of them have similar narrow band looking stars that are blown out. But like you say, it's that sharpness, that that real sharpness, and that lack of noise reduction that really stands out. That's that's always what uh what I what I look at and it's you know the guys do it with long focal length and they do it at short focal lengths and they they just really manage to pull out the detail. I mean I'm thinking about uh like Mike Miller's APOD. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Jimmy Walker posted a really nice. I don't remember which nebula it was. Maybe M8. Or something like that, but uh, and uh, I think Mike posted it last week, and it was just insane how much tight detail there was. And uh, Mike was using it as a sales pitch for noise reduction software, but uh, not not necessarily. But uh, I thought, oh wow, that's just he did a lot of things right with that one. I think one of the bigger things is too, like uh, if if I if I shrink an image down, like if I take a picture with my DSLR. And shrink it down to like 800 by 600. It looks fantastic. It looks great, but at full resolution, it just it falls apart. <laughs> and maybe that's the 40 hours, like you were saying, right? I feel lucky to get two hours lately. So. Yeah. Well, more more mosaics or arguments for doing mosaics. It, Especially uh, now, are you're still using a DSLR, right? Yeah, I just got it modified uh, in March, I think. Yeah, so you're enjoying the APS-C real estate that I'm missing with right. my cap. 
So uh, <laughs> that's I, I with the with the DSLR you don't really have to mosaic so much. Now obviously you're using smaller pixels, so that comes into the effect somehow. But uh, I have like three thousand thirty. I'm trying to think, is that right? Across maybe thirty three hundred pixels across. I think my sensor is. And but smaller, uh, and uh, I'm tempted to mosaic because I do notice that like you want a pixel peak, but you also want it to be huge. So this mosaics are a great way to make a better looking image if you can spend four times as much time on it, and then probably ten times as much processing time assembling the mosaic. Um, the one of the things I and it, it it still goes back to that you need a lot of integration time because uh, it's not really just the darker areas that stand out. But if you can if you can get a bright astro image, it's very uh, impressive. And I think that's why when we shoot the Orion Nebula, you see like images of the Orion Nebula, they all stand out as being just amazing because it's such a bright image. And I think uh, what my goal has been, kind of considered my, uh, what I kind of try and do with all of my images now is I want every one of my images to be as impressive as if I it was the Orion Nebula. So I really want to make every image stand out. Now, you know, like, the first time you probably shot the Orion Nebula, you were, you were jumping up and down. I mean, this is amazing. I just shot 180 seconds, and it looks like a finished image. Um, so it's relatively easy to do it with that. But to have a really full screen-filling uh, nebula, uh, the way I've done it is by using narrow band and lots of integration time. Uh, I've taken in my last two or three images, actually, not my last image, but last couple, uh, last few images, I've gone to 19 hours of integration time. Uh, so I do spend one night taking one channel, and then the next night taking another channel, and then the other night just acquiring the data that I wasn't happy with the previous nights. Um, so, so that's... Getting the the image to be bright but noise free is difficult, and I think are you, that are you talking just dynamic range there? Um, you know the Ansel Adams seven seven layer, or, you know seven zones. You know I'm. It is dynamic range, but it's just it's clean dynamic range because that noise. Well, with your dynamic range, you're still. Uh, as you as you stretch, you're still boosting the noise, and um, if the if if it was a perfect sensor, and there was no noise, then yeah, you just stretch it till you want to be there. But uh, that 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 does become a limitation. And um, I don't know. I doing the long focal length. It's interesting because I do. Uh, it's very dependent on seeing on sky conditions. Uh, I have to pick the right night to. I, I pretty much only do long focal length, uh, but uh, the good nights give me good images. So if there's something tight that I really want to pick up some tight details on, then I have to pick the better night of seeing. Um, and those are a few of the the things that I'm kind of doing to uh, improve my images. Um, I've been really happy with my images lately since kind of figuring out the CCD and starting to do bicolor. Uh, one thing I really like about bicolor is uh, not really being committed to a specific color palette. Um, even though like you, you can go natural or you can go Hubble. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I'm doing kind of a modified Hubble because I don't have an S2 filter, so I'm doing a synthetic green channel. But... Uh, I like that I can play around with the colors, and it's not as important. Um, 
as much as I like background neutralization and color, well, I shouldn't say background neutralization. As much as I like color calibration and picks inside, I'm not using it these days with the, the bi-color stuff because I like picking the colors that everything is. And um, I don't know, uh, I don't know if anyone else has any comments on what makes images great. Nothing else. Anyone else imaging right now? No, we just had a storm go through, and I'm uh, and the moon's going to be up. So even though I'm, I got narrow bands and everything, we probably got bad seeing and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm testing out how well my narrow bands can handle the moon. And my ADU, my uh, my mean ADU is 1431, so not so bad. On a, on a moonless night, it would probably be 1300. So What's that? What sensor are you using? What camera? This is uh, the STF8300, the SPEG STF8300. Yeah, 1300 is the background noise. The background sky yes. level. Uh, typically, on a moonless night, it'll be 1300. Right now, it's 14. Uh, mean is 1431. So, it's not so bad. When I, I was actually up at my lake house, well, let me think about that. The moon, is the moon quite up yet? I don't think so. Should be. It's, oh yeah, it's ten forty two. Can't see it out Besides there. Besides that, it's it's uh, it's on the early part. Oh, it's full moon today. It's, it's Harvest Moon Fest or if it's the Moon Festival at the local Chinese place today. Yeah. And they Chinese usually do that on full moon. <laughs> Shouldn't be on um, full moon though. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem so bright out yet. Then again, I have a light over my head, so. But uh. We'll see. I'm shooting away from it. Uh, the Veil Nebula. Bright target, too, so that'll stand out through the moonlight. All right. Um, next I'm not going to be here next week. I'm okay. Gonna I'm going to next, Ohio. Next week, uh, I think uh, Guy Lane should be on. Um, I'll make I'll confirm on that, but he we, he is penciled in, and uh, he's going to be going over backyard EOS, and uh, maybe we'll be able to figure out uh, about backyard Nick and backyard CCD and all of the uh, new programs that are coming. But uh, for now, um, we uh, we still have one viewer, but uh, if nobody else has anything or anything else to bring up. Okay. We could call it a night. Good night, guys. Good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Good night, Tim. Yep. Good night, Sean. Good night, Tim. Good night, Adam. <laughs>